Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to do something slightly new and it's called linear modeling. And what that really is, is kind of using linear equations to solve world, real world problems. Okay, so let's get started. So things to understand about linear models, there's a dependent and independent variable. So if you draw like a X and Y axis, the y axis is always the dependent variable and the x is the independent variable. <coughs> so y depends on x. Okay. So for example, if you have a distance time graph, the distance depends on time. So the distance is the dependent variable, time is independent. Okay. The gradient, the gradient represents the rate of change between the two variables. So the gradient of these graphs, they have a meaning. Okay. For example, how many y values there is per x value. So we'll go into this in more detail. Y-intercept, Y-intercept represents the initial amount. So when X equals zero, I'll go into more detail as well. And there are some limitations of linear models. So let's just take a look. A person's height as a function of age. So say if, um, a person's height as a function of age, so this is your height and this is your age, right? A person's height as a function of age may be approximated by a straight line for a limited number of years as humans don't keep on growing forever. So you may think that as you become older, say from when you're a baby, you grow taller. But this will only last for a few years, right? It's not going to keep on growing. So maybe once you hit the age of, say, 20, you stop growing taller. The speed of a car is limited to a certain speed, right? So, so, so if you have a speed and time graph, for example, the speed of a car has a certain speed, so you can't go on forever, right? The width of rectangle is limited to the total perimeter available. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about this one. This one is not too relevant. Okay, let's just go through an example. A catering company charges a base amount of $100 plus a rate of $25 per guest. Write a linear function that models the catering costs. Okay, so normally when it comes to doing these questions, so because you already learned about the equation y is equal to mx plus b, right? Now here, what you can do is you can basically fill in these values. Now here it says plus a rate of $25 per guess. So the rate is always the gradient. So you can say this is your M. And the base amount, which is your, your initial amount, that can be your B. Okay. So for example, if I put in these values, what I should get is Y is equal to M is 25X plus 100. And I'll explain to you what this means, okay? So it says write a linear function that models the catering costs. Okay, so in this case, why is the catering cost? So for example, if there's one guest, then what that means is total cost should be 25 times 1 plus 100. Okay, the, the, if there's no guest, when x equals 0, y is equal to 100. So basically, by using y equals mx plus b, you can substitute these numbers to form an equation that will model the catering costs. So, so you can kind of think of this as a formula to work out the carrying costs depending on the number of guests. So if there's no guests, it's $100. If there's one guest, it's $125. If there's two guests, if X is two, $150. So that's your, that's, your, that's your linear function. And we can also call this a linear model, okay? So this graph models the printing cost for, com for a printing company on a given day. So as you can see, this is a a linear equation identify the independent and dependent variables okay so we know that the y-axis is always the dependent variable so the dependent is cost that's the dependent variable and independent variable is what number of books number of books and think about it so the cost for the printing company would depend on the number of books right now, it wouldn't make sense to say the number of books depends on the cost. Okay, so that doesn't make sense. So as you can see, cost depends on books. So cost is dependent, number of books is independent. Question says, find the cost of printing 500 books. Okay, so that's pretty easy. So you just basically need to draw a, a vertical line from 500. Okay, whoops. So basically, what you can do is this, actually. 500 is about here, right? So here you draw a line here, so it's about 4,750. Right. Basically, you, so you find 500 books, you, you move it up, you draw a line, 
and then you read across. Find the number of books that can be printed for three hundred for three thousand dollars. Okay, if it's three thousand dollars, how many books can you print? So it's about here, right? So this is two twenty, two forty, two sixty, two eighty. So so this is two sixty, right? And this is two eighty, and this is in between that. So it's going to be two hundred and seventy books. So for some of these questions, it's a little bit annoying because you have to try and read in between the lines, but they're not that hard to do. Find the gradient. What's the meaning? Okay, so so let's find the gradient. So so let's just draw a triangle. Draw one which looks nice. Okay, so I can draw this triangle here. If we draw this triangle, what's the height of this triangle? The height is, I think the height is just 500. And what's the base? Well, remember each unit will represent 20 books, right? So this is 60. Alright, so then how would you do this? Well, the answer is just 500 over 60. M equals to 500 over 60, which is equal to what? 50 over 6, which is 25 over 3. Okay. So if you type this on a calculator, it's about 8.33. And what does this gradient mean? <clears throat> so that's a pretty good question to ask. And that's something you may not have done yet. So the gradient is 8.33. And what that is, is that's the cost of producing another book. So if you look at this first question, you see how the gradient is 25. So 25 is basically a type of rate, the rate of $25 per guest. So for here, so you can think of the gradient. The gradient is 8.33. That's basically the cost to produce I mean to print an extra book, right? So the meaning is <coughs> a, a cost per ad additional book. So this is the cost of printing for an extra book. So it basically costs the $8.33 for every the extra book, find the vertical inset. Vertical intercept. What's the meaning? Okay, so when they say vertical intercept, what they mean is the y-intercept. All right, so y-intercept is about seven hundred and fifty. Okay, so and because we know that this seven hundred and fifty is on the y-axis, so that's going to be a type of cost, right? So what we can say is this is the initial cost. Initial cost. I guess you can put in the sign because it because it is type of money. Write the linear function for cost in terms of the number of books. Okay, so now here you have to write the equation of the line. So now the remember you already have the gradient. So so the gradient is twenty five over three, and the y intercept is seven hundred and fifty. So we can write is this. So the cost is c is equal to m x. Okay, I guess it's M, the N, plus B, right? Because this is not Y and X, this is C and N, right? So C is equal to M, N, plus B. Now we just have to substitute the M and the B. So what's the M? The M is 25 over 3. And what's the Y intercept? Y intercept is 750. So that's your answer. And the question says, can this model be used for, for, for any number of books to explain? Okay, so now it's asking you about the limitations, and I tell you what my answer is. My answer is, the answer is no, because think about it, a printing company can't print an infinite amount of books, right? A printing company can only produce so many books. So things could be, the printing company can only be so big, right? So the answer is no, because... The printing company cannot produce an infinite amount of books. Okay, cannot produce an infinite amount of books. Number of books. All right. Let's take a look at another example, okay? So let's look at example three. 
The weekly cost of manufacturing noble computers at a factory is shown in the table below where n is the number of computers produced. Find the linear function. Okay, so this is not an easy question. Basically, what this question is asking you to do is find the equation of the line. And if you still remember to find the equation of the line, first, what you can do is find the gradient. Gradient is just find the difference of two of the points. So y2 take away y1, if you still remember. Over x2 take away the x1, right? And that's equal to So three one three five zero minus oops, minus two one nine hundred <coughs> over eighty five take away fifty. So that's two hundred and seventy. Okay, so the gradient is seventy. Now you need to use the point gradient formula. So y minus y one. So I'm going to pick this point. Okay, y minus y one is equal to gradient x take away the x1 expand the right hand side don't need to write the dot there minus okay so what is this this is okay and then you add 2190 to both sides so then that's how you get the equation So plus this, so that gives you plus 8, 4. All right, so this is your answer. But the, the thing is, because this says find the linear function for C, so we're not actually using Y and X. We use C and N, right? So we just re, uh, replace the Y and X with C and N. So C equals to 270 N plus 8400. Okay, so that's your answer. Find the gradient and what's the meaning? Okay, well the gradient is already found. The gradient is 270. And what does it mean? Okay, so let's take a look. So this is the number of, com this is the number of com computers um, produced and this is the weekly cost. Okay. So you can say the gradient is the... So which is the, the dependent variable? The cost will, de will depend on the number of computers, right? So the gradient is basically extra cost for for every c computer produced right so it's the extra cost for every additional computer right so that means it costs an extra $270 to produce an additional computer. Well, I guess it's the extra weekly cost to be more precise. Find the vertical intercept. What's the meaning? Okay, the vertical the intercept is what? 8400, right? So 8400. And what we can say is this is the initial cost. Initial cost. So the regardless of the how many computers you make, you have to pay eight thousand four hundred dollars. Okay, so that's the initial cost. What is the cost of producing two hundred computers? Okay, well, just substitute two hundred into this formula, and you get your answer. So C is equal to two seventy times two hundred plus eight four zero zero. So this should be what fifty four k. So five four eight four zero. How many computers can you produce for 60k? Okay, so in this case, they give you the cost and you have to work out the n, right? So 60k is equal to 270 n plus 8,400. 8, Just solve this equation. So you take away 8,400 from both sides. So you get 51,600. is equal to 270 n <coughs> n equals to this 
51600 uh, divided by 270. So just use a calculator for this. So 51600 divided by 270. So I got 191. So I guess you, you round it down. Okay, so 191 uh, computers. The factory made 44 computers this 44 more computers this week than last week. By how much did the cost increase from last week? Okay. So remember that it says 200. So if you know the gradient, gradient is 270. So this is the extra weekly cost for every additional computer, right? So that means if you make for every one additional computer, you have to pay an extra weekly cost of $270, right? So the question asks you if you make an extra 44 computers, how much the extra cost per week? Basically, you just times 270 by 44 and you get your answer, okay? So it equals to 270 times by 44. And this gives you 270 times by 44, 11880. So the cost is 11880. All right. Does this model have any limitations? Okay, so for these questions, you can always kind of say the same thing. You, see, you can say yes, because because uh, you cannot produce an infinite number of computers at a factory. So yes. And the, and the reason I just said, okay? Because think about it. The factory is only so big, right? So if, if the factory is only so big, that means you cannot produce like an infinite number of computers because it takes up space. So the answer is yes, and then so you can you can write the reason. So I'm not going to write it because it will take me some time. All right. So hopefully by doing these exercises, um, you kind of have an idea of how to do the homework. So I'm just going to give you a brief summary. So, so the things that I believe are slightly more challenging in the topic that, that I explained today is firstly, you need to understand what the gradient means. Okay. So this is something which you may not come across before, but basically. The gradient is is the the extra cost per additional per unit on the x axis. Okay, so in here, the gradient is the cost per additional book. The over here, this is the the extra cost per additional computer. Okay, so make sure you understand what the gradient means, because for a lot of students, this part is normally a bit confusing. The vertical, the intercept, so the y intercept, this is usually pretty easy. You can just say it's the initial cost, all right? And then there's one more thing that you need to know is trying to figure out how to write the equation, the linear function. And to do that, what you can do is just do it the way that I did it. Find the gradient first, so pick two points. Find the gradient using the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus the x1. Once you find the gradient, use the point gradient formula. So pick a point, y take away y value equals to gradient, x take away the x value. Simplify, and then you get your equation. Make sure when you write your final linear function, rather than using y and x, you should use the units that they give you here, okay? So here, they use c and n, so your answer should be c and n. Okay, so that's all for today. If you have any questions, let me know on Google Classroom.